You are the bane of my existence. You are the pain that I hold near. You are my thoughts. You are my dreams. But you don't care. If you're away, I'll close the distance and find a path way to your heart. Lost beneath the city and the lights. Now where to start? Rain.
Lana Gay, are you there? Leave the music on a little bit, maybe, huh? <clears throat> Hi, Lana. Hello. There we you? go. How I'm good. You? How are you? Pretty good. Good. I can't see you, I but I enjoy I gotta, your backdrop. I got to do this. Take my, uh, there we go. Ta da. So we're recording and live streaming right now. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. doing that and i don't know how many four are watching on youtube and some on facebook i think so oh fun yeah and are we good to go we're good to go oh, we're good to start it well this is exciting well first off congratulations how are you feeling i'm happy it's like you know i don't think it's like giving birth to a baby but it's similar in one sense you know fair fair <laughs> enough well i do okay so i i off the top uh, of course i congrats on the new record but why cheer for the deer that even just the title had yeah. me questioning um, curious sure a, a friend right at the end of the first year of the pandemic 2020 she uh her son was going hunting a family tradition right and mm -hmm. she said i always cheer for the deer and i thought that's a great phrase you know meaning they come back in empty-handed right and mm -hmm. I thought that really, that's like a rally call for lots of things, right? And, uh, and, and it took on a life of its own. Um, I had this one song, you'll, it's at the end of the album called Cheer for the Deer. And uh, it was just- Part one and two? Part one and two. It was eight minutes long. Ask Nick when he comes on if we, or I'll ask him maybe. It was eight minutes long and I cut it in half because, you know, I was just going crazy. But I thought that was a good thing to do. It was like, cheer for the deer, I thought, it was a rally cry for so many things, you know, like the underdog, rooting for the mm -hmm. underdog, that kind of thing. Um, it's really about being optimistic more than anything. And I really, oh I really love the phrase. So that's why I, I kept that, you know. And you've been, you've been playing music for such a long time. I know that you yeah. played guitar for a long time. So yeah. why was it, why was it the right time to release a record now? Was that's it the great. pandemic? Yeah. You know what? I, I had, just released an EP earlier in 2020 of like indie rock, four or five, five songs. And by the end of the year, you know, we're all stuck at home. What are you going to do? And I have like my tools at home and to do music. And I had a couple of songs and I talked to Nick Boyd, who we're going to bring on later. And mm -hmm. uh, I said, I have a couple of songs I want to get mixed. So it, eventually I realized I had enough to do an album, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, maybe I can actually do an album for once. So it basically turned out to be an album. And it was so this was before, oops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, uh, Continue. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, no, I just was going to say, is this a pandemic record? So it wasn't the pandemic that motivated you to start going. It was beforehand. You know what it was? It was a bunch of songs that I thought were okay and good. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe now's the opportunity for me to do them at home because a lot of them are electronic based. Even some I barely touched, to be honest. They'd been written for a long time. And I just sort of said to Nick here, go and mix it and put mm -hmm. it in the album. Like, I think the majority of the songs were probably written while my time at Radio 3. <laughs> but they okay. weren't all complete. They weren't all complete. Lyrically, they weren't all there. And in some cases, I did a lot over the pandemic to sort of build them out, you know? So for so, those watching, we know each other from CBC Radio 3 from many years ago when we were both working there. And as a huge music nerd, actually both music nerds, um, it's so fun to kind of, it's like, I don't know if it's a full circle, but it's so nice to see and hear your music after so long of just hearing about all of the projects you've been part of, helping your kids and teaching guitar and um, making music on your own. Yeah. So I'm super excited for you. Thank you. I mean, you're the one who got me into the music uh, committee there, right? So I think they're looking for people and it was such a hard job. I felt so, you know, I felt like, oh, I really have to listen to all the songs and make a good choice. So I, I know what it's like to be on the receiving end, right? Right, right. Which is, I mean, you're taking it very seriously. I was definitely say that much. And I, okay, I need to talk right about, um, yeah. so, so again, I know you as a guitar player, but these are heavily synth-based tracks. Yeah. When, you, when you were composing or when you were creating, did you start with, with keys and synth? Or did you start uh, with guitar? Yeah, I, for these songs where it's synth, it was synth from the beginning. And guitars okay. actually in this album are really kind of an afterthought for the most part. Um, 
I always like early on when I was into metal as a teenager and stuff, I also liked synth music. So I used to do stuff in, in our band room in high school and I do mm -hmm. like synth songs and that kind of thing. At, at that time it was called MIDI and stuff, but um, I always went, I always had synth. I always liked Depeche Mode, OMD, mm -hmm. New Order, that kind of thing. Early so there's on. definitely a New Order vibe. I'm trying to figure out, uh, Capture Love has a New Order vibe. Yes. I wrote that note for sure. That song was written again back in those days, but that whole arpeggio part at the beginning, mm -hmm. I added that on during the pandemic. So I was like, oh. that really made it. I thought it made it kind of flow and stuff. And I thought that was kind of neat. It's kind of, of like when you write oh, songs, it's like mm -hmm. a puzzle. You're putting pieces together until you're satisfied with the way it looks, right? And that's kind of what happened with most of the songs. So. Well, I can't write music, so that's why I talk about it. So I'm excited <laughs> to, to talk to you about the way you put it together. It, it's a journey. For me, it's yeah. a journey, right? So sometimes it's quick and sometimes it takes years. So, What song was the challenging one? What, what song was the, the thorn in your side to get together? Um, well, I mean, you can ask Nick. We'll ask him later. It took a long time to get the vocals right on Deep Scars mm. for some reason. We kept kind of sort of missing the mark, I felt. And it just was really tricky. I don't know why. We probably remixed it the most out of all of them. Um, but I mean, some of the others, they were pretty easy for the most part. Like lyrically, some were a challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. Cheer for the Dare was the most fun, to be honest. Yeah. That was just me at home jamming. Like that's the one that I pretty much almost created from scratch, as well as No, no Matter What You Say. Um, that one, No Matter What You Say, just to backtrack, was actually another song called... Uh, I see somebody's ghost and I hit for some reason that song didn't click, but I used the same kind of bass line and I created this song, no matter what you say out of it. So and you, and you, of course, for, you've performed all the instruments on these tracks. You just, you recorded it yeah. at home. There's only, the only thing is the bass, there's bass on two part in two songs and that's Raleigh Miller. Who's going to be on mm -hmm. later. Uh, my bass player and Vicky Von Vicky. Mm -hmm. uh, I had him do a couple songs and Nick did actually the one synth part in capture love with the chorus yes. I, I said it's missing something Nick and he he came up with that one sort of chord and it worked a set of notes and it really worked so I was happy about that yeah. so earlier you talked about um you know being in high school and playing in the music room and whatnot a lot of people during the pandemic really went into their nostalgic catalogs and really kind of yeah. went back to that comforting stuff were you also listening to music from the I, I don't know when you were in high school but from that era were you going back to your favorites and that is that how that kind of moved into this realm of, of kind of, it's definitely more of an 80s tinged yeah. vibe. Um, I kind of knew right up front when I looked at the collection of songs that it was going to be an 80s vibe. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go back to listen to a lot. It wasn't until like Capture Love and a couple of songs where I said, maybe I should go listen to OMD again or, you know, or New Order. <laughs> so I listened to like Enola Gay, you know, even mm -hmm. the same kind of last name as you, Enola Gay. Um, and that was a great song to sort of latch on to and some of the New Order stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it, for the most part, all I really wanted to do with this is add the arpeggiated kind of synth things. I really mm -hmm. wanted to do that throughout the record. And I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm happy with what, how it came out, you know? So, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I did want to know too, why did you want to start off the album with narration? I know you're going to be talking to Paul a little bit later yeah. on about it, but I don't want to steal his thunder, but I, I was wondering why was that? Yeah, actually, uh, he, can't join us today. he can't join oh, us. Okay. The drummer from Vicky Von Vicky. So I had the bass player from Vicky Von Vicky and the drummer. Um, so I, I just felt I took over the drums for this. I did the synth parts and all, and all the drum programming. And I wanted him to participate somehow. And he has a good voice. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there needed to be a short intro to the album. And that Enter the Deer is really an afterthought. If you notice, it's exactly the same chords wise as Cheer for the Deer. So mm -hmm. I felt like it was a good bookmark for the album. Enter the Deer, really short, and then it gets into the album. And then I ended off with Cheer for the Deer. So that was an afterthought. And I was kind of happy with how it turned out. Absolutely. Are you going to get a deer tattoo now? Just putting that out there. I have to get a tattoo maybe one day. I don't have any, mm -hmm. but maybe that'll be the one I get right? Amazing. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, now we're going to be going track by track. Well, you're going track by track through the record with family and friends and everyone who's tuning in. And I did want to know, uh, I know we talked a bit about challenging tracks, but what song is your, and you know, we talked about songs that kind of came quickly, but what's your favorite song? When you that's, listened back, you're like, 
I got to say two, um, because the <laughs> other ones I'm kind of not to say I'm sick of, but I've heard them too much. I'm going to say, no matter what you say, I love that song for some reason. I don't know why. It's got a good vibe, dancey vibe and cheer for the deer. It just, mm -hmm. those are my two faves, I think. Um, there's some others on there that are close, like Fire Inside and, and Worthless Souls. I think Worthless Souls, I like the chorus a lot in that one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the instrumentals I like. So, but my favorites are definitely No Matter What You Say and Cheer for the Deer. So Now, you have another band you've been in, you've been playing in different projects yeah. for, you know, your whole life. But is this your first record that you put together and put out there? It isn't because right back when I started to listen to Radio 3 in 2009, mm -hmm. I put out a Prince Farming album. <laughs> so that, that was album. that was actually a record you released under yeah, that handle. But it wasn't. Yeah, it was basically me doing everything like mixing. Mm -hmm. and, and then I went to actually Noah. I went to Noah Mintz to master. Mm -hmm. And he liked the songs, but I don't think they were really mixed well from my, mm -hmm. my side. But I did sort of, I, I think, a full 10 songs back then. Um, and some were good, I think. Some were, mm -hmm. you know, still good. I just have to go back to see what was on there because I can't remember half of them. But, you know, we may, I think we may use them in Vicky Von Vicky. There's some rock songs there. I don't know. We'll see. How different was this process compared to that one? Or was it the same? Um, good question. Uh, I'm trying to remember back then. Back then, I felt like I really, I hadn't done music, like created music or written songs for a while. It had mm -hmm. been maybe seven or eight years. And so I suddenly got like a, a, an inspiration and I, I've been like that ever since, um, just writing songs. Like I probably have a collection of a hundred song bits on my iPhones. I don't know if you, did you hear Paul McCartney talk about this? He thinks it's- No, really, it's about iPhone notes. He, yeah, no, it's just like your voice memos, right? Yeah. And he said it's ruining uh, music because people have an idea that's really good, but then they don't work through it. They just put it on their phone, right? Mm -hmm. But in my case, all the songs from here were kind of how that happened. You know, I just sort of went back and threw them and found some that worked. I thought, hey, that's a good idea. I should keep going. How, how far back were you going? Uh, I think I have from 2007, but I didn't, I didn't go that far for this. Okay. This, yeah. But yeah. Well, I was wondering, because that, that, the thing is, you know, if you write something in a notebook or you go back, you don't have that timestamp where you said no. you had been working on songs since Radio 3 Days. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were both there for quite some time. So I was like, I wonder how far back we're going here. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. interesting. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I think my time is almost up because we've got, um, we've got Mr. Nixon Boyd coming up. We do. To, to uh, join I don't, Yeah, I don't know if you want to stick around or, or uh, to talk with him a little bit or just say hello. And then we can. Sure. Yeah. So, Nick, I'm going to bring you in. Let's see what happens. He comes. Zoom, eh? <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's, we all know this so well, this application now. We didn't know it before pandemic, but hey, now we know it. Every time I have to do something in Zoom now, even though I've been using it for two years, I'm always like, uh, something always happens. Here he comes. Hey, Nick. There we go. We can't hear you. You're muted. I got to unmute you, I think. We're playing the mute, the mute unmute game. Yeah. I'm trying to unmute you. He's I, unmuted I, now. Did there I do go. it? Yeah, you did it. Yay! You should know by now, right? We yeah, all know we by all now. Know. That's what I mean. That's the, hey, great yeah. to see you both. Good to yeah, see you. Yeah, nice to see you. So how is uh, everything with you? Uh, oh, everything's awesome. Uh, I've just been mixing today, so uh, this is oh, a wow. nice uh, gear shift. Cool. Are you in Aurelia or are you in Etobicoke? I'm in out of, yeah, I'm in Aurelia right now. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, how about while. you? Where are you, Mike? You look like you are. Uh, <laughs> this is this is from forward. Florida. I went to Safety Harbor and took pictures of live oak. Have you ever seen live oak trees? They're like they look like they're dead. But I love this. I love ironic. The, yeah. Yeah. I thought you were. In, I thought that was the scene from Harry Potter that you had. Yeah, just it to put does it look background. like. That's why I like it. I like the Harry Potter stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So let's talk about what, how you guys, how far do you guys go back? So I know that oh. you've. Uh, I mean, we're a family, right, Nick? I mean, yes. I remember I remember the moment you were born because your dad called everybody. He called my dad. It was like three in the morning. And I'm like, who the heck was that, dad? It was Jeff saying he uh, had a birth of a son named Nicholas or Nixon, I guess, at the time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, it just it took me a few years to become aware of Mike. Uh, and <laughs> uh, I've known him ever since. <laughs> That's right. 
and, and Nick and Jake played at my wedding in Quebec. Like we had like a, oh. a not a wedding, but a wedding party after the mm-hmm. fact. And they were, you played like a Blink-182 and a bunch of songs, right? I remember. Yeah, all the hits. All the hits. Amazing. So <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Now, of course, Nick, you've been, you know, in Colorado, you're touring with Anyway Gang, you're a very talented producer and doing lots of mixing and whatnot. So it's, it's interesting because you guys have this family tie. But at what, you know, everyone, you see your cousins at the barbecue or whatever, but at what point in time were you like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm in, I can help you out with this. I like what you're doing here. Uh, well, uh, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Mike has uh, always been working on music as far as I've known him. Uh, and, you know, it was an inspiration to, uh, you know, try and make music myself, you know, from, Thanks, uh, you know, from seeing what he was working on, you know, um, uh, always something. And uh, yeah, it just seemed natural when uh, he first came to me with some songs he wanted some help with um, to to say yes when he asked me to be involved. Uh, it uh, um, ah, the, the thought of uh, uh, not saying yes never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the funny thing is uh, a friend of my dad's in Florida, he, he said to me, he heard me play a couple songs. He said, can you record that song for me? And that's kind of what kicked it all off. And I said, that's to true. Him, that's true. Said, that, hey, that let's, can first, you do a song? Remember? That was the first thing we collaborated on. Yeah, was, um, yeah. yeah, that that cool. You got a prompt to to record that tune. And and Mike, you know, I know this record is, it's like dance tunes. It's basically yeah. like, you know, disco, <laughs> electro, dance. Um, yeah. yeah. And what's crazy is that the last thing we worked on was mostly country songs. <laughs> true. Uh, before this. <laughs> so, you know, Mike, uh, you are a versatile writer. You're Thank a versatile you. musician. Uh, not a lot of people can say they wrote a, you know, a country album and then just a couple years later uh, made a electro pop <laughs> record. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, that's my influence. I love Johnny Cash to New Order. So, and like everything <laughs> in between. That's I don't awesome. know if you'd put like Iron Maiden between there, but yeah, that too. Why not? Right? So next it's record. Metal, it's a metal yeah, record next, next. Next record, yeah. Actually, Cheer for the Deer, I had... I had aspirations to put metal and heavier rock in there, but I never did it. I was going to. It it evolved through the genres, if you notice. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. It does. It is a. um, There are um, snippets of of different genres, like uh, in Cheer for the Deer. That's for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate this um, this chat, and I also appreciate the, the the connection and like the history you guys have. With, with each other um i did want to talk about when you know so michael Wynn says hey can you punch up this song um what track you, you played since on a track did you not uh, who uh, nick? nick yeah I, yeah did i did i play since i think actually yeah. mike did most of the keys you played synth on capture love that one chord that's it thing you, you that's true that one chord i think that's all you played on this record <laughs> yeah, normally I, I you know. play bass and guitar and stuff but this time that's all you did, right? I know, so. yeah, yeah. Mike uh, had it pretty much covered by the time I got my hands on it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I think I yeah I did like little tweaks here and there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just because sometimes you hear something, you know, uh, when you're making a record yourself, like Mike has done, uh, you you know, uh, you get you know can get really close to the thing, and you're like, I've got it, I've got everything that needs that needs to happen here, uh, you mm-hmm. know, I, I'm covering it. And then uh, when it hits um, sort of a fresh pair of ears, sometimes you hear, you know, one little extra thing. <laughs> so I did that one little extra thing. Yeah. And What's I mean, your opinion? Nick, Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't I mean to say, interrupt. Nick played guitar, like the excellent guitar solos in like Bane of My Existence and bass. He plays bass on probably all the other ones, except for this record. So He's a talented guy too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. What do you feel, or how? Because I know uh, Nick, you were talking about you know getting that fresh pair of ears to listen. Um, for both of you, what do you think about the idea of imperfections on recordings? Do you like when when artists leave them in? Do you feel like there's like a little Easter egg element to that as well? Definitely. Yeah, I think they're important. You know, um, I think too often you know you listen to a record and it feels like it wasn't made in the real world so Mm -hmm. leaving a little something like you know somebody laughing in the background uh or like you know drummer counting the song in uh you know or you know or even um you know sometimes somebody will slip up uh, on a lyric and change them you know just in in the uh 
heat of the moment of singing something. And, uh, and I, I think it's often, um, you know, those surprises that bring a lot of life, breathe a lot of life into a record. So when possible, leaving them in, yes. I, I have a couple examples. I know uh, Land of Falling Snow, that, that song we did a few couple EPs ago. Mm -hmm. I, by mistake, I hit like a button and it doubled the time in the drums. I was making the de demo I'm like that works. Right. And then we got Jake to play it in double time. And I was like, that works. Yes. Um, one time I've had a piano part in garage band and I kind of moved it by mistake into the drums. I'm like, that works as well. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. I never would have things yeah. that you never would have thought about if you're no. just writing, um, yeah. you know, with a little, little help from the universe. For sure. Definitely. And you have to recognize it, I guess. That's all. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, know when it's uh, worth leaving in. Exactly. <laughs> so now I'm wondering, Michael, wait, yes. I always call you Winsy. So I'm, I'm always like, I'm struggling to say Michael. I'm like, Winsy, Michael. Um, you can blame Craig comes, Norris for that. Craig Norris. I know, I know. Uh, God love Craig. Um, when it comes to performing, are you more interested in just getting your creative outlet out there in song? Or do you want to bring these songs to stage? Do you want to figure out how to do it live. I've been thinking about it and I think it's going to be really difficult, but I mm -hmm. think I could probably do it. I was actually going to do this in a live setting um, and probably more acoustic than anything. I mean, doing an acoustic, maybe some synth. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Tonight Bar, Tonight in Toronto, that bar called Tonight. Uh, it's a very small bar, but it's great. Uh, I might play there in May or June. We'll see. To do okay. We'll It'd be see. cool to translate them uh, into an acoustic setting, like an acoustic yeah. guitar. Uh... It might be, yeah. I might even try to do the synth thing. I don't know. We'll see, you know. But it, I think it's going to be a challenge, <laughs> as opposed to the other ones where, you know, there's the bass, drums, guitar. You're done, mm -hmm. right? This one, it's like a little trickier. So Nick, from a production standpoint, working, working with songs, it, you know, d does it depend on how you create them when you try to put them in a live atmosphere? Is it much more simple if you... Like depending on how you start, what's your experience with that? Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, it's yeah, there, there's definitely you know um, songs from different genres definitely bring a different energy to the stage, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, this stuff is this stuff is pretty peppy and heavy heavy hitting. Um, but you, you know, usually um, if there's a good song, uh, you know, at the at the core of it all, it should probably translate to to any kind of presentation to any kind of instrumentation mm -hmm. uh you know uh i think that's a, a great test of a good song you know and yeah. i think in this case that would be um that would be true you know who said something like that like years ago when i first played with them sloan oh James cool that. <laughs> that's where i'm putting my light on just to make he said that because somebody said what are you gonna do after uh, grunge is gone he said grunge is just like a flavor we put on the song it's all about the songs <laughs> yeah yeah right? same thing that's cool yeah. Um, I think, I think there's some truth to that for sure. Yeah. And, and it, you just know, cause you hear somebody like do uh smells like teen spirit in a whole different way. And so, you know, mm -hmm. that that's, that's the core of the song, but they can do it in any genre. Right. Kind of tells you the strength of that song. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. You hear, uh, I mean, you hear Beatles songs played by like full orchestras and stuff yeah. and, and you're like, wow, that music is really good. <laughs> no yeah, matter exactly. how you play it. Exactly. Yeah. When it comes to these tracks, um, Lindsay, were there any songs that you have various like remixes or various uh, different um, takes yeah. on them? Uh, yeah, you know what? There aren't. Um, okay. Like I said, I don't know if you heard earlier, Nick, I said the hardest song was probably Deep Scars, just for mm -hmm. the vocals on that. Yeah. We, we kept trying to get that, or it was me. I was having a problem with it, right? So I was trying to get somewhere with that. And finally, we got, we are very, I think it's right on now, like it works. Um, but there wasn't anywhere where I think I would have done it differently, because I, I think it was very close to what I demoed, really. Like, it, some of them are the demos, obviously. But it's just sort of, it's where I got, that's the end point that I got to. And I, I can't, couldn't imagine them any other way, so... Because you made this at home, can you explain what your setup looks like? Because everyone has a different idea of a bedroom record or a basement record, <laughs> garage well, record. My setup here is like a computer desk. This is where I do my work, right? Mm -hmm. This is what I did for the stuff. I had like a, a computer to my left and, and I had my instruments if I needed them to the right. And my dog Ziggy was right here sleeping while I worked at night, right? <laughs> With my headphones on. Sometimes I'd, I'd be inspired. I'd come down and work for a few hours. Sometimes I'd work for like 10 minutes and say, that's it, I can't do it. <laughs> There's Sometimes not much here. Um, 
I just have a couple of instruments. It's mostly computers. So. Fair enough. Well, what about your vocals though? Where did you record your vocals? That's a good question. I think I did most of them here. I mean, I don't have the best technique. You can ask Nick about that for recording, but I think um, I used, I basically just plugged it into something called a, a firebox. I don't know if you see okay. it. Yeah, it's see. it's showing up sort of through the, <laughs> the wilderness. <laughs> it's, it's very old. You used to use this on the old Macs to record things. It boosts the signal to the computer. I don't know if you have to do that as much now, but yeah. It's just interesting because for acoustics or something, when I record my radio show at home, I'm, I'm, I literally create a fort out of pillows and blankets and I'm underneath this. So just it doesn't sound yeah. as echoey. So I don't know what it's like, depending on where you are recording in the, in the world out there. I, yeah. I think you got to give Nick credit for making it sound better than it did, really. He mixed it <laughs> because there was a lot of challenges in probably what he had to mix with what I recorded. Uh, what did that look like for you, Nick? Uh, what what is what does my home setup look like? Well, no, what is like what is I again? I don't know anything about mixing a record, so I don't know. I don't know how challenging it, it would be when you get these parts sent over to you. Um, yeah, so uh, I will say, Mike, like next time, uh, take a page from the Book of Lana and make a little pillow fort. <laughs> uh, I expect if I do it at home, you're going to give me some tips. Nick. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it no, it sounded it sounded good, and like you know. Um, uh your singing was was natural and your melodies are strong and and that's the main thing um you can you can do you can pretty much work with anything uh you know these days um mixing uh mixing this was you know i felt like making things sounding heavy hitting was yeah. important uh because mike's you know grooves and synth parts um uh you know were all all uh, very very important to get across um you know and this and the singing mike's singing is is relaxed you know and you you want that to come across as well you know it's like the um, uh, the lyricism is there and the melodies um you know as long as long i felt like those were cutting through um uh and the drum like i said the drums and synths were all uh, firing on all cylinders uh, yeah. then it was going to feel right um yeah and and i mean if i think you know the record that mike made is is probably a workflow that a lot of people were, were you know, were experiencing you know, over the past couple of years. And, uh, you know, you, you hear about, you know, lots of stuff coming out from sort of like people's bedrooms uh, over the over the last little while. And, uh, you know, every time somebody else, you know, puts puts out a like a record they made in the bedroom, I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and I think there's something, too, about like, um, you know, people having like total privacy to make whatever they want. Um, and, you know, sort of, um, uh, the, the, the lack of like, you know, inhibition that goes along with that being a good thing, uh, because you're not in a studio with a bunch of people, you know, uh, you know, breathing down your neck to, to get something right, you know, in the moment you can take your time and, uh, you know, figure it out at your own pace. And, uh, I think that's something really exciting about, about people making uh, stuff from mm -hmm. home these days. I think that's great. Has it changed the way you make music or and Wednesday is it, has it changed the way you work moving forward I making prefer, music? I think I'll do my demos here next time and then I'll mm -hmm. go to wherever Nick takes me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if, he, if he says do it at home, I'll do it at home, but I'd rather do it in the studio if it's more rock based. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think people are more open to doing it both ways. Like um, I, you know, had to adjust to doing Lana as I know you did, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to working from home, to recording from home. Um, I, I wound up uh, doing a lot of writing from home. So like a Zoom session where you just have like, you know, acoustic guitars yeah. like this on the screen and like the lyrics yeah. up on a page. And uh, I found I really grew to like that because um, the song has nowhere to hide. You can't put any bells and whistles on it. You're, you're yeah. and There's no vibe in the room, which yeah. often makes things exciting. It's like, hey, you know, how you doing? You know, your buddies are all there and you're having a good time by virtue of that. Um, that's not present, you know, when you just do it over a screen. So you're really focused on the song, <laughs> which I grew to actually like quite a bit. Do you know of any apps that would do that now, Nick? Like that can synchronize things? Because synchronizing things is the problem, right? When you want to collaborate with somebody else. It's yeah. Always, you're layered, like one person, then another person. You know what I mean? They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're still sort of working on it. <laughs> I don't I think it's say. a perfect science yet. Yeah, um, you know, but like for, for songwriting, I just, uh, I found Zoom works quite well, yeah. um, you know, because you don't have to be totally synced. You're still just having kind of a conversation. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to like 
be ready, set, go, and like play, play something through, you take turns demonstrating um, your ideas, you know? And there's a special setting, I think, on Zoom, so it doesn't filter out backward noise, background noise, so you can yes. play as well, like a live Titan. You have to make sure that you get that right as well. Totally, yeah. A couple settings, it was a bit of a learning curve at first, yeah. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think everybody's pretty much got it down now. Wow. Amazing. Well, I feel like I could talk to you guys forever, and I do know that I we know. have to get through the record. Yes. But for whatever yeah. is tuning in wants to hear the, yeah. the songs not here so we should it's probably okay. do that I mean, we'll 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 see what happens but this might go on longer than i thought so that's fine i, I don't <laughs> mind that <laughs> as long as everybody else yeah. likes that too um lana thank you so much for hosting i appreciate it it's this. been so fun it's nice to see you both and nice to see you hear the record congratulations again thank and you have a have a great night and happy release day thanks lana yeah and congrats, Nick, you want to stay on you want to stay on for a second and then yeah, i'll sure, bring on the next guest Bye, Lana. Thank you. Okay, bye. Hey, Nick. Hey, Mike. Um, <laughs> so you're going on tour soon, right? I'm going on tour, yeah, in oh. just over a month. Wow. For like a cross-Canada tour? Or? Yeah, a couple couple weeks from Victoria to Montreal, basically. Right. So Anyway Gang, just so people who don't know. Exactly. Yeah, with, nice. with any Anyway Gang, yeah. Um, it's the same setup from the Toronto first Toronto show, right? Anne and Adam. Exactly. Yeah, okay. same crew. It's going to be fun. Not awesome. That's great. Good for you. Definitely. Uh, what are you yeah, working so, on lately? Sorry? What are you working on lately? Like uh, you did Deanna Pe Peckoff stuff? Yeah, right? Deanna's record is coming out on Friday. So oh, I'm wow. super excited about that. That's um, going to be awesome. Uh, yeah. Nice to have a couple releases in the same week. Jeez. Yeah, I know. <laughs> back, back to back. Um, That's awesome. This and that. Um, yeah, I'm doing a band called Deforesters. Okay. Um, I'm finishing up that record. Okay. Um, I'm finishing up a record for an artist called castle frank as well i've heard of them i think yeah. i saw them actually at the game yeah or yeah maybe the monarch i saw them actually. yes that's the right they've they played their their first show was just pre-pandemic <laughs> in right. like february or something 2020 i, think I saw that their show. first show ever and um so they've been material best. played with them that's why i saw them I yes think. exactly exactly yeah. exactly yeah. Okay. Um, and I just worked on a couple of girlfriend material songs too. Cool. We recorded in February 2020. Okay. And for the longest time, uh, Graham, right, who yeah. uh, is, you know is the singer and songwriter and girl girlfriend material, yeah. was just kind of sitting on the songs, not being sure what to do with them. And then he yeah. was like, you know what? Let's <laughs> finish mixing them. Uh, and so we just did, and that was really wow. fun to, yeah, sort of um, you know rehash a project that. Yeah. Uh, that you thought was not going to finish or maybe you didn't know. Yeah, well, well, really, really just the fact that we, um, you know, did all the work, you know, yeah. in, literally in the days leading up to everything shutting down. So right. it was nice to kind of rewind, you know, psychologically cool. a little bit. Wow. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks so much for mixing this and doing this, all this work for me. Uh, yeah, you didn't produce awesome. this time, but hey, you With will that. next time. <laughs> What'd you say? You didn't produce it this time, but you will oh, next hey, time. But that's that's fine. I love jumping in wherever uh, wherever I'm needed. <laughs> awesome. Wow. I don't want to keep you much longer, Nick. So, so uh, no have problem, a Mike. Yeah. Um, but thanks again. Uh, I think it turned out as best it could. I think it's pretty good for me. But um, it's great. I really appreciate all your help, and I look forward to the next stuff we do, which um, I'm already itching to do. But we'll see. Man, yeah, I'm I'm always there, Mike. I'm always there right. to do. All right. Thanks, Nick. Congratulations again, man. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm going to bring Raleigh Miller in now. Uh, Nick, cheers, man. Cheers, we'll Mike. Later. Thanks talk so much later. for doing this. Yeah. Congrats. See you later. See ya. Just waiting on Raleigh to show up. I think I have to, uh, ask to start video. Here he comes. Hi, Raul. Mike, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so awesome. excited for you. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just let me introduce you first. This is Ralston Miller, uh, bass player extraordinaire from Vicky Von Vicky, formerly Trains of Winter. And, and now you contributed to this thing, my solo stuff. Before we get into my solo stuff, let's talk about Vicky Von Vicky has a new song coming out in yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I always call it the Paul song, but it is, he, he led this. This is his song, yeah. right? We both contributed. It's a little bit different for us, but I think it's, some people will enjoy it. I think, I think a lot of people will. It's well, called, what's it called? 
it's called Cuba Libra. And uh, I think what's fascinating about it is both of you, both of you guys who are obviously very creative people, it's in a very similar period of time, got motivated to do some things which were really a lot different yeah. um, in some ways. And also, from my perspective, had some similarities in other ways too. Um, sure. It didn't particularly shock me that you did an album of this stuff uh, because I know how much I know how much I was impacted and influenced by uh, the music of the '80s, uh, and I'll talk about that later. But you know, um, I of course like when Paul came with this song. You know, it just it, it 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 just didn't surprise me. I was like, "Yep, given what Paul's listened to and how he puts music together in his brain, I, I can see this." So, anyways, uh, you guys went some very different directions, sort of around the same time. Uh, yeah. You put out a little more volume. His was definitely a labor of love, and uh, as Igor says. Uh, all good artwork is uh, uh, never ends. It's only abandoned. So, yeah. and <laughs> anyway. I mean, Paul does have aspirations for more. So it's not like he just stopped on this. He no, no. Music yeah, work. yeah, it's good. And I mean, it's funny. I mean, we can. I think we could be pretty open about this. There was yeah. definitely some. Um, we had some tension surrounding all the music, and <laughs> not like not like it. Sometimes it was a little bit hot. I'd say hot for us, but yeah, you know, I was kind of sitting around going like. Um, <laughs> I thought of that scene in the first Star Wars movie where uh, uh, the C-3PO, the robot, was beating Chewie, that Chewie the Wookiee, and, and, and Chewie was getting all upset at that chess game. And, you yeah. know, Han yeah, yeah. said, uh, you know, Han said, just uh, let the Wookiee win. Yeah, I, sort of, I, I kind of felt, I kind of felt like, yeah. hey, Mike goes and plays a whole bunch of music and expresses himself creatively. It's a muscle that gets exercised. I honestly believe that, you know, people come back stronger when they do that. And sure. felt the same thing for Paul, which is like, go get go work your chops out, play a different style of music. Like, you know, Paul was sitting in um, on a bunch of Afro-Cuban stuff on Saturday night. And from like a bass player's perspective, I'm like, couldn't be anything better for time and rhythm, you know? So um, I think it's great that you guys have been getting to stretch your wings like that, so to speak. Let's let's talk about now your contribution to the album here, uh, Melted Wings. Um, I basically did all the tracks and then I was like, wait a sec, you know, like this song is missing something. And that was the fire inside, right? And I'm like, uh, I think it can do a bass. I think we need a bass part in there. And that's when I kind of said to you, hey, would you mind playing bass, right? And do you remember what I did as well? I put in Cheer for the Deer yeah. on purpose. I put it in there in the yeah. same folder that I shared with you. Yeah. And you're like, what is this song, Mike? Because <laughs> I knew, I was like, if he likes it, then I'll get him to play on it and we'll put it on. So well, those are the two that you did, right? And they were that's right, it. that's right. And I'll be honest with you, um, when you first put that music to me, yeah, I was just like, I absolutely have to write a part for this. And remember what I said was, I think the deal was this, is I said, hey, can I write a part for this or parts? And you can take it or leave it, you know? Like it's either gonna work or it doesn't work. And again, I, I, I would have loved to be in a conversation with you and Lana and Nick about the home setups right. um, because this is the greatest thing about the era we're living in for music is that you know, when we first started recording music in the 80s, and that's when I did, yeah. uh, people need, don't, don't know that 10 minutes of reel-to-reel -reel tape, new, was $500, 10 minutes. Yeah. Remember us buying used reels of tape for 250 bucks, right? 10 minutes. So everyone's wondering, like, well, why were the songs only four and a half minutes back then? Like, two per tape, you know? Like, yeah. anyways, um, yeah. so, so amazing now with this technology, literally you email me parts, and I play until I'm blue in the face or happy or I give you different versions. It's really quite something. So, um, but one of the things, and I actually never told you this, is that one of the cool things about getting to play on this, uh, this synth-based music was that um, over the years, all the way back from Trains of Winter, even back to when I played metal bands all the way to now, yeah. you as a bass player have to fit into a really, you need to know, to be good at bass, you need to know where to fit into the registry. And it actually took me, a long time for that. It took me a long time. And I want to say that I think I, I missed it most of the time when we played in Trains in Winter. Mm. Um, and I, it was just for lack of, I wish I hung around in sound engineers more, you know, just to understand. I don't think you missed yeah. it there. I don't think you missed it. I just uh, think maybe you've changed a little bit. It's evolved. And, right? and maybe it's a bit of mixing and a bit of sound too. You know, like I now know, like I could walk into a studio and say, hey, Nick, yeah. here's my sound. This yeah. is how I do it. I want this out of the amp, this out of a direct. I want this mic, you know, and like, 
he could take it to take it to uh, rules. But now for people who don't know, Trains and Winter was a part of the Kingston scene back in the early 90s. So that's around when the Mahones tragically yeah. hip, all those yeah. bands are coming out. We kind yeah. of sort of vaguely knew some of them. Yeah. yeah. So it was like an early 90s grind. It, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyways, you know, back back to the parts of the album, what I knew was with this kind of music, I knew I was going to get to play a little bit more of that mid-rangey, gritty bass sound that really was a constant underpinning of almost all of the non, like a lot of the music I listened to in the 80s. And I don't want to go on too long about this, but if you want to start adding them up, you guys already mentioned like, you know, New Order um, as one. But like, I think about bands like New Model Ari. I think about, um, I think about bands like uh, Simple Minds. Simple Minds had a massive influence on me U2, big country. Um, they they all had these bass sounds that like they worked for them, and I always wanted a little bit of that. Even you know even uh, uh, even Mike Mills from REM, right? There was a sound there, and um, I never you know we played different music, so I never got to do this. So this one I just knew I was like, oh wait a second, I hear the part in my head, I know where I can fit in here. And then the beautiful part about you know the digital modeling now is is that I basically went to I found exactly the '80s amps and speakers I wanted to use. And that's what I recorded it with. So really it was, I was so excited to play on it. And, uh, and then, but when you said cheer for the deer, I was like, this is it. And uh, I don't know if you'll appreciate this or not, man, but uh, immediately really what came to my head was Rush's La Vila Strangiato. Like oh, okay. that's what I came to mind. And I actually, I never you know got to I do thought of, I thought of right away uh, metal uh, Pink Floyd. I thought oh, something yeah. like one of these days, yeah. I thought a little yeah. bit. Yeah, like that when your bass comes right in, I thought. Yeah. I mean, we can even play it now if you want, just to see what. Just yeah. to show. Well, you know, I, again, it was it was just such a pleasure to get to interact with you. First of all, in a very different way, and I think you and I both agree that what Nick yeah. said, the energy in a room, is always amazing. Yeah. Uh, but this was a much different and more cerebral process, and yes. uh, turns out shockingly amazing. I don't know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do it all the time. Like I said to Nick, I'd rather be in a studio sometimes, but sometimes yeah. if you want to create and that's all yeah. you can do, you do it. You have, yeah. you do it with the tools you have available. Right. So, yeah. And that's, uh, that's one of the things I don't think that, that again, if, if people have played and particularly played live, you understand that, but like yeah. um, after playing with you and Paul now for essentially 30 years yeah. on and off, like I can look at Paul and I can look at you and I know what's going down. Body English says this is working or not working. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, like I said, when you have the luxury of time and uh, a recording tape that never ends, uh, yeah. uh, it can lead for some, uh, some pretty crazy things. But I will say this is that uh, um, I understand, uh, I understand how challenging this would be to play live. Um, yeah. But uh, our other bandmate, Tom Nesbitt has an amazing synth and keyboard player that he works with. Ooh, uh, who uh, he said would be very game for this kind of approach. That's and, enticing. That's enticing. Uh, I like I, that. Someone might be able to take on that side of the live yeah. production since that, which would be pretty yeah. exciting for me. So I, I kind of envisioned it as a one night only situation, but uh, how about we play that right yeah. now? How about we, yeah. how about I share the sounds? Yeah. It's going to go here. Computer audio. I'm going to play that song. I'm going to go to uh, the album. And when you get, are you going to go, uh, are you going to do part one and two? Uh, well, I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to play, I'm going to try to go right where you're where you do your thing. I think it's around yeah. the 240 mark. I'm not this is a uh, cheer for the year.
sure Peter Hook from New Order right now is probably trying to sue me for sound infringement. gonna pause it there um you do a lot of cool stuff though in the lo- the next part too which i like you're like going you know all the little i love it i love the little preggios all the little stuff you're doing um, well anyway. you know Good mike I, I was so excited for and particularly in the outro here when it calms down and it starts yeah. and, it, and it finishes uh it finishes with the with the uh with the classical parts yeah. and I, I i didn't tell you this but i would have loved to have uh, also um, overdubbed uh, some more classical guitar in there because I know the, you know that's my background and that's almost almost all my bass technique really comes from uh, well basically classical guitar and listening to Rush for the most part <laughs> but um, I just love the opportunity sometimes to just sit back holding notes or space and then the the parts at the end was great and I, it's I don't know it's something that people really realize about you there's um, particularly when it comes to acoustic stuff or um, e- even a, a classical or finger picking play, Mike is quite technically prodigious. Uh, I watched him slash through quite a bit of like applied music at university. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I played classical guitar, but like the, I couldn't touch the stuff you played. And it was, it was fun to get you see, get to see to do that because you yeah. haven't done that for a long time either, you know? No, so no. anyways, it's fun I to play uh, those things. Fire Inside. <laughs> I want to play Fire Inside again. Very cool, yeah. Um, we're going to go to that. Um, and then uh, a couple more questions, and then I'll move on to uh, my pals from Quebec. Let me just get uh, this going. Is that the Danani Posse? Yes, <laughs> give me the Danani Posse. Here we go. This is Fire Inside. I might fast forward, but you're right in this right at the beginning, anyways. Oh, this song, this song's pretty tight. It's it's not that long. No. And it's quite different than the other songs. It's very kind of. High school state band. The, the vocals are so good. We can listen. I can listen uh, to all the album, but I don't want to bore everybody. I know. Well, it, it might I mean, not to... bore, but you know, it's not the kind of live setting. So yeah. now, and it's always classic though. And people always ask me about this, Mike, because so when it comes into the chorus, immediately, yeah. it's like always there's that like, and there's a little bit of the Pixies. It's always oh, <laughs> black. He's always circling somewhere in the back of your brain. Yeah. And I, I, I don't even know if you know that, but like every time I play people music that you've written or that yeah. I've actually played on, someone goes like, who's the Pixies fan? And it's like, ironically, not actually me. Like, yeah. I, I, I really appreciate what they do, but I was just into a slightly different kind of music at the time when they like, and I've seen them live, like truly yeah. creative geniuses. But like, 
it's always funny. And I just, I love that move from that chorus to that really open, bright, uh, 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 from the verse to the open bright chorus it's just it's a wonderful transition it sounds like i don't good, so. really i don't really see the pixies influence when i do songs but i i understand that that is my influence i mean for me they kind of opened doors a long time yeah, ago got yeah. Into it. it was sort of about don't worry about this stuff but do some strange things and see well what happens, right? and you know what happened with those guys and what i what i needed to understand was i think a lot of the time sonic youth was making decisions to play dissonantly that yeah. were sometimes not I'm not going to say, I don't know. I wasn't in the recording room. I never played with them. But like, what I can tell you is that everything that Frank Black does that sounds like a mistake or dissonance is intent. There's intent oh, yeah. there. And, uh, and there's a reason for it. And I've, yeah. I've seen it pop up in our music and I just, I roll with it now. And it's quite wonderful because it does make for some interesting like uh, conflict, you know. I'll tell you one thing that I have from the Pixies that is meant, like it's something I think about. It's mm -hmm. also what Nirvana, Nirvana did. If you look at their songs, they do mm -hmm. things in threes, yeah. Pixies. Yeah. whether it's three yeah. four time or they do they repeat a chorus three times or a verse yeah. and nirvana did that well as well most people do it like in two in couplets like yeah. two or four but they yeah. did threes which i really yeah. kind of think is neat you know it's kind it of like, it's giving yourself a different kind of feel for some reason i don't know why but well that's and, the only thing i consciously do with songs sometimes yeah and it's 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 funny i mean we talked a little bit about it when we were chatting today but yeah. It's just always so interesting how your past influences, they leak out in different ways that sometimes obviously you see and sometimes you, you hear. And um, I've always said I would love if I had a superpower, my superpower would be to be able to hear what other people hear when they listen to music. Because like I am just like, I hear one thing, but I, I think everyone just hears a little bit differently. And uh, people uh, hear things differently, for sure. Yeah, I, I think so. There's yeah. things that you isolate to, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Hey, Raul, I got I to gotta say, uh, I'm going to move on to- Absolutely, Paul, absolutely. Norton, but I really yeah. appreciate you coming on. And I, yeah, well, time. Mike, I can't thank you enough for letting me uh, hop on uh, the coattails here. It was a lot of fun. And uh, please don't ever hold yourself back on moving to any music genre. I, I'm around if you need me. And uh, I sure. will say to people that I do hope that uh, we have been talking about it. And if we can get out of this a little, just a little further- yeah. Um, we hope that Vicky Von Vicky will be back to rehearsing and writing again soon. Oh, yeah. We hope to, uh, hope to be on the stage sometime this year. So I hope so. Uh, and, I hope and also, I'm going to get the synth player and contact me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, Good Mike. You, Have an amazing Take night. Take care. Thanks, Cheers. Man. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Uh, for those who are waiting now, I'm just going to bring in some buddies from Quebec uh, Paul McDougal and Alan Morton. Uh, hopefully, they uh, can ask them to unmute themselves and then we'll see them here. Here we go. Who's this? Is that Paul? It's Polly Mac. Yay, Paul. How's it going? Hey, Al. How's it going, man? Alan, you hear us? He's not hearing us. Yeah, I know. I'm hey. good. You're me? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, these these guys are like one Can of you my, hear me? some of my best friends. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I'm here. Did you listen to the album today at all? I know Alan did. I don't know if Paul listened to it at all. Probably not. Well, I, like I said earlier, it always sounded a little bit Stone Roses, very 80s. Kind of liked it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know. Can you hear me yet? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. We hear you, Al. You're good. We hear you. You're good. Uh, hey, and and first off, I'd like to say congratulations, <laughs> Mike, on this uh, launch of uh, you know this Thank album, you. Melted Wings. And I would like to say I think it started from your Powder Blue launch of uh, you know it must have started from your Powder Blue uh, like oh, flying, flying B guitar yeah. Yeah. that you had. You it's know, in the cover uh, there, right? It's in the cover. Yeah, I do, I do. I was in a band uh, early on in my career, which was not a career, and we didn't let Mike in because he actually knew how to play his instrument. <laughs> so I knew you'd bring that up. Yeah, yeah. We, well, <laughs> we let you come in and do Spider Man. Yeah. Oh, Spider Man. And what, I did more than Spider Man. Yeah, you yeah. no, did more than Spider Man. But like, I remember because the Ramones came out with like yeah. their version of Spider Man, probably about. I don't know, four or five years before we did it, and you yeah. did it on your Flying V Powder Blue guitar. 
which would like if you put it in a fireplace, like yeah. the shot from my fireplace, it would have melted and it would have been winged because it was flying bee. Now I just want to do some things. I want to uh, I want to show. Well, I don't know if I have it here. Hang on. What I want to do is I want to play a couple songs. We're gonna listen and people will watch us listening. So the first song is Enter the Deer, which is the start of this all this whole thing. Okay. I just want to play it. I'm not gonna play it all the way. I might play it all the way through. It's short. But this song is like a filler song. This is an intro song. Okay. I just want to play it. I'm not going to go through everything. Here it is. This is the start of the album. Enter the deal. Taken by the sound, you turn it all around. That's my buddy Paul Pass. the ground taken by the sound you start to look around you laugh at what you found you're on the ground you're lying on the ground the world is upside down watching as you sway the wind blows your way the scents are now astray your thoughts are of the prey your thoughts are of the prey of which you are today the echo of the blast your heart it races fast the forest is a mass for you i have to ask for you i have to ask will you now outlast the story of the feared the tempting of the steer the steering to the near it's fatal to the deer it's fatal to the deer, who I now will cheer. And and when I heard this song originally, I loved it because like I live like a block and a half from where like uh, Leonard Cohen lives, right? Or who? Yeah. Leonard Cohen. Oh, Leonard know. Cohen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that guy? He's like. Yeah, I know that guy. Cool. Yeah, I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, hey, hey, I, I live, yeah. I live very close to where he lived, and uh, one of our friends, Chris Hindle, actually painted his house at one point. Right. But on top of that, this sounded like a, a John Paul Jones, comp- you know, composition. Yeah. Like yeah. with really good keyboards, and it had that like a poetic. And, and I know when I heard this one originally, it, it hit me with Leonard Cohen aspect. Cool. I want to share an image, okay? I'm gonna share an image now. Hang on. Give me a sec. This is from my computer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hey, this one, you guys see it? Yeah. No fun has ever been had at that place. (laughs) (laughs) Can you explain this photo and explain that fire, please? Paul. Um, oh. uh, let's start, Alan. I've been talking too much. Let's let Alan go with this one first. Yeah, sure, Al. Go. Well, this is uh, this is the view you get walking out of Paul's place uh, towards yes. the fire from. You've probably been inside grabbing a beer or something at the yeah. fridge, and yeah, uh, you you know, this is just early in the night where things are starting to get going because otherwise there'd be like uh, ten to twenty people there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a gathering spot for great times. And uh, we can give approximate location near Morn Heights, north of Montreal, right? Yeah, Between yeah. The shoot Morn. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got I got to meet Getty Lee at like uh, you know uh, yeah. at the comments. Uh, at the comments, before, yeah. like yes, <laughs> and all I talked was like expos and hats. Yeah, he was a big he was a big friend of Warren Cromartie's, right? So okay, cool. yeah, cool. Okay, I'm gonna stop it now. I'm gonna close this one. Stop the share. Uh, am I still sharing? I'm wearing it, and and you must notice that I'm wearing a like. See my vest. See my vest. What is this? What's your vest? It's made from <laughs> real gorilla chest. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. I see what the vest. Yeah. Is. What's the t-shirt though? T-shirt underneath. Oh, Batman. Oh, Batman. Good, good. Um, but also, I'm wearing this like I really wear because I'm such an Expos fan. And but yeah. I'm wearing this in memory of your dad because like we actually saw 
Like in, I don't know what, 80, whatever stupid year, like the uh, the Blue Jays won instead of the Expos. So yeah. I always have this hat. I never wear it, and I thought I'd bring it out tonight. It's oh, like, he's I had got, that he's got Expos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, I really so like we, the music, though, be, beyond all this, because like we're just chatting yeah. about like stupid photos and stuff. I yeah. love the fact that you've kept up with music all your life. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It's, um, it's been fun it, uh, hearing you play around the bonfires or just anywhere. Um, I mean, well, Alan. Flotilla, Flotilla last year was awesome too, right? right? We need yeah. to do Doc Fest this year. Doc Come Fest. Well, Doc I, Fest. Yeah. Was your Doc good, Fest? Like, screw all the other lakes, Colonel Lake only, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only one with an island, baby. Um, I'm gonna play another song. Uh 1985. I have two instrumentals you guys hadn't heard until today. So okay. I'm gonna play a little bit of this song, okay? And this one really I, I put 1985 as the first song after Enter the Deer because I wanted to bring people to the 80s. And I thought the only way is play a song called you know 1985. So there you go, yeah. right down in the middle. Let me just like it. Is it not working? Oh. oh, it's not working. Oh, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to do it again. Here we go. Computer audio. Here we go. It was working. Oh, oh well, I'm not going to be able to play songs now, it looks like. Darn. <laughs> Was it something we did? No, no, it's not you. It's because I ended my share before, and it's not coming through. Do you hear anything when I hit play? Maybe not, eh? I know. Something was burning in my oven, and I had to go, like, take it out. Sorry. <laughs> well, we don't want you. We don't, we don't want the oven to burn down there, Paul. No, no, it's all good. It's like, okay, okay. Good. Hey, and there's Phineas McVicker to Nanny Cat. Where is he? Right there. He's on the couch. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just, we might have to end this early if I can't play any songs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop the share. And we'll A few it. bars. Um, <laughs> let's have your, well, we could always have your opinion about Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> they're, they're good musicians. I like them, but I mean, you know, Led Zeppelin, you know, come on. It's like a band coming out yeah. and exactly like Metallica or Iron Maiden. It's like, come on. Hey, hey, hey don't diss Iron Maiden. They were I'm like, not dissing you know? Iron Maiden. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, but like, he's not they, dissing they, anyone. He's, he's just saying they're, they're just, just this pretty. sound like. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just got messages. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's get some like uh, melted wings here stuff. <laughs> No, but like, uh, so what's your favorite? Alan and I both love the Tragically Head so much. And Mike was in Kingston when those guys were getting big, which is another yeah. thing, right? Yeah. You're also around with Finney McConnell, who's just yeah. started a band with Ultra Bomb right now with a guy from yeah. Husker Du and That's stuff. So, like, music is still happening. And oh, it's yeah. Awesome. It's not stopping. It, no. Yeah, it's not stopping. But yeah. you were around in that time when. Finney and like uh, all the hip guys were in Kingston, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So and and it's just amazing to see a guy like Finney like doing something with like a guy from Husker Du, which is one of the 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 best shows I ever saw live in my yeah. life in Montreal was Husker Du New Day. You know, Rising. you know, Finn's first band was with Gord Downey, right? Yeah, he has pictures. I I've seen him post them of that. For for me, I knew him a little bit at first, and then he promoted us a couple times, and even and I just saw that picture with Trains of Winter. All those tapes were in that thing. He even came up one time when we were playing at a bar that he got us the gig. He came up and played with us a couple songs, so that was fun. Yeah, Um, so I just saw that like picture he put up, like uh, I don't know somewhere, and it was like Trains of Winter. I still have a couple tapes of that. Well, I need to take a couple back from you somehow. Yeah. Or I'll buy them off you. I don't know. No, no. Are there, <laughs> I, I don't have. Does anyone have a tape player anymore? Can it's anyone hard to find. You can get them. I have yeah. one here that I yeah, haven't used. The Colonel has a tape player. 
Who does? The Colonel, the uh, oh. the yellow car. Oh, yellow mustard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love it. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Colonel. I had it playing uh, today. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> I, you know what? <laughs> it, it should be rolling through the hills at the end. I'm like, the fact that the Colonel Mustard plays tapes and he did it in his today <laughs> <laughs> with a lead pipe. Yeah, lead pipe in the conservatory. Always the conservatory. Always. Possibly sometimes in the library with a rope. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this again because I don't want to abandon this completely here yet. I don't know. Is anyone still watching this? I hope they are. I think some are. <laughs> this is so I, I'm Maybe some have dropped off. I don't know, but hey. Uh, who cares? Here we go. Oh, there we go. No, that's not the song I want. I want this other one. You ready? I want yeah. to play 1985. Okay, here we go. It's no John Lord. It's no Ray Manzarek. Uh, it's like if I heard this song in the eighties, I would have punched someone in the head for playing it. But okay, it's I'm like, gonna do uh, another one. I'm gonna do another that you would probably say the same thing for. Escape no, off. but no. I, I'm getting into the arpeggiated better. keyboard. This is automatically better. I'm not gonna play this very long. This is where I get the stone roses. Like, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I love that Manchester stamp. This definitely has that Manchester stamp too. Yeah, yeah. This is not so much. No, it's smooth like that, all right? No, it's hit this. You almost feel like a dolphin. That, that song is about, but, you know what me to tell you what that song's about, I think? I mean, I wrote it, but I mean, what I think, I always have an interpretation after as well. And I think that mm -hmm. song is about getting love from different directions and being so overwhelmed with it that you can't escape it. You know what I mean? So that's the whole okay. gist of it, you know? Okay. Part of that is 
is I realized Ziggy, our dog, who we had to put down last year, he mm-hmm. that's especially dogs. That's that's like the loyalty they give you, that love. You can't you can't deny that, right? Yeah, you had shadow and chest. Yeah, and- you know how it is with pets, like cats. It doesn't matter. They're oh my god. Loyal. You want like uh, you know that that story of like uh, I'm like walking out of like uh, the veterinarian place in the shoot, and yeah. Tina sees me and she's at a red light and I'm bawling. I'm bawling because yeah. like Rally Cat is yeah. it, it dead in a box and I yeah, like yeah. and I'm like uh, like and she's like she started crying. I'm like it's green light. I'm just go, just go. And then I'm like googling. How yeah. deep do you have to bury a cat of like in your country place? Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I did the same for dog. Yeah, yeah. so it went. It said four feet. I went six because wow. I was wow. just devastated. But yeah, like losing a pet, losing yeah. a parent. Yeah, you know what? Losing a parent probably doesn't hurt as much as losing a pet, and that's yeah. a weird thing to say because like you're always around your your parents and stuff, and you can yeah. talk to them. But when you lose a pet. Yeah. They're like, you know, I don't know. On that note, I'm going to go to, uh, Alan thought this sounded a bit like a high school band or it needed real horns. And I agree, it does. I'm going to play it, Black Bars. I might skip up a bit, but I'm going to play it right now. Uh, Didn't I say I don't think it's. I don't think it sounded like that. Sense? I just think uh, I could hear horns and yeah. strings and stuff like that. But I, I always thought this song had a bit of a high school band kind of vibe to it. When the horns came, like the, the fake horns, whatever, right? Again, it's an instrumental for anybody who wants to watch it. I have two instrumentals on this deck. I'm going to just pass forward a bit. that's that's a song you can hear i'm not playing all the songs in the album i'm just going through some that maybe people haven't heard um and it's all there it's on all the streaming things like uh spotify well, I, I think uh, alan and i can both agree that one could use some like uh, some big ass horns it has okay. horns but i think real no, more more horn i more know horn. more cowbell you want you want it to get a little hornier right eh? <laughs> 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 Um, uh, the last song I'm going to play before we sign off is uh, this No Matter What You Say. Because this, no one really heard this, I think, until, well, you guys heard it. But I thought yeah. it's a good, it's a good kind of dancey. We alluded to it earlier with Lana and Nick. And uh, I just thought I'd play it now. And this one I thought, I didn't have enough guitar. I like this one. This one of the last songs. I put guitar at the beginning. <laughs> Even though it's kind of like scratchy guitar. And I also like how things are not really syncopated properly.
I'm just going to stop it briefly. You're going to hear what I said to Nick. I really need to hear a transition from this part to the next one. You're going to hear, I said, it's got to sound different. And he did that really well. I love it. Like, I have no problem with like that. It's like, it's like... It's coming up, and I'll tell you what I need right here. play the whole song but um no but that's awesome and that's like yeah you know what and uh it really like I, i'm not dissing it like i love the manchester sound and it's really got that big kind of sound to it and i love that sound when it came out originally yeah. and i thought like it it went away too quickly yeah and so i'm really happy that you're bringing that kind of sound back because like it's very musical and it's like it, it pops and thanks it, paul thanks so Al, what do you think of that song? You think it's okay, that one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with? <laughs> I just I just saw how uh, each of your releases is just sort of different directions. It's I've enjoyed every one of them. I just want to make a shout out to my cousin Daryl, who who actually reached out to me today. He's from he lives out west, and he said. Wow, you really took a new bold direction here. <laughs> and I said, it is, it is bold. But uh, I, I kind of said to him, I think I'm going to go back to like rock next time. But for now, this is this is the way. Yeah, but you know, I think I think uh, like uh, melding into that more like going to rock instead of going straight to rock, I think it'd be really good. Like, uh, yeah, um, some of this stuff, like you know, like there's just like no no one loves like three minute like singles anymore, and that's the kind of music where you can definitely meld that kind of sound into a little bit more rock things and have a bridge that that are gonna like you know yeah. get a bit heavier in the bridge and and stuff. But like I love the sound and like and I've always loved the Manchester sound and I heard it like in, yeah. in that thing right and. Awesome. Uh, it's a really good sound. It's always been a good sound. Yeah, and like uh, to one of the original bands that kind of did that for rock and roll in a way was like Boston. Like yeah. you think about Tom Scholes, you yeah. think about his keyboard playing and his like guitar playing. He melded both of them to make it a really like crazy sound. Well, let me ask like, Al for a sec. So Alan, like for you, like right now, I know you love Tragically Hip, but when we go back to 80s, you liked a lot of stuff, right? I remember yeah. us listening. I remember you and I on some kind of Ferris wheel listening to uh, Don't You Forget About Me <laughs> or something like that. And us yelling, faster, you bastard. Yeah. Faster, you bastard. Yeah. Faster. Yeah. But I think of yeah. Simple Minds I and I think of you sometimes. Like you like Simple Minds and a bunch of other bands, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, Flock of not, Seagulls, Just pick up. Yeah. Okay. No, cool. The Cure, The Alarm, Big Country. Yeah. That's right, The Alarm. Yeah, they were good. Um, Big Country, also, they're Scottish. Like Alan and I, we're both Scottish, so we love <laughs> these guys in a big country. Yeah. All right, guys, I don't want to keep everybody for so long. This is kind of ending here now. Um, any last thoughts? before I hang up the phone, the live stream? Um, I just want to say, like, I really yeah. love the fact that you're chasing your dream right now and, like, doing this stuff. It's really, really awesome. Like, uh, it's I, a was just the lead, it's a hobby. I was just the lead singer of Peace Man and the Stuss, which, just, like, never, <laughs> ever happened. And uh, you actually are a musician. And I, I hats off. Wait, wait. 
Yeah. Well, I lost the hat. Man, where's my hat? <laughs> no, hats off. And this is a tribute to Johnny Wynn and watching the uh, Blue Jays win their first uh, World Series in your, like, actually, it's now the Crack Shack. I think we were actually in the kitchen when yeah. it happened. So, All right, guys. I'm going to say goodbye, and I'm going to say thank you so much. And everybody, thank you guys for hanging out with me, letting me play some songs. And uh, thanks to everybody else. Hey, hey, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for the music. Thanks. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Paul. Guys, take care. Hopefully, we'll see each other soon. Right? Okay. Thanks, to everybody. Party on, Mike. Flynn. Cheers, everybody. Bye.